Question. What do you think about when I say that 1950s sound? To the boot, oh boot, to the boot, the 1960s. All the leaves are the leaves 1970s? Are 80s? 90s? Alright, how about the sound of 2005? 2010? How about 2019? I mean, I guess Beyonce is really popular. I mean, yeah. Katy Perry is still a thing. Childish Gambino, so amazing. I mean, right? But you get where I'm going with this, right? Strap in team, because this video is largely based on the work and theories of Mark Fisher. And Fisher was, he was kind of a bummer, to be honest. <laughs> That's the thing about philosophy, right? Like these great thinkers are just spilling the beans about the horrors of existence and then like, yep, what you gonna do about it? Nothing. But I have some ideas, so don't yeet yourself into a hole just yet. Let's go back to the music example. Imagine someone traveling a decade into the future from their own era. So the 1950s guy goes to the 1960s, 70s to the 80s, you get it. When traveling into the future, you can imagine how a person from the 1950s might react to the radical changes in music of the 60s. What the hell is this? It just sounds like noise. Is this even music? This example works pretty well within the last hundred years, but then something happened or rather, didn't. If you took a person from the 1990s and had them listen to the music of 2005, well, it's just not really that different. A lot of the same bands and performers have been on the pop charts for the last 20 years. There's no reaction, no surprise, no, is this even music? After 1999, the concept of what an era sounded like slowly begins to break down. Now, I'm not the first person to point out that we seem to be recycling cultural trends in music and fashion and art. And for a lot of us, it's been happening for such a big part of our lives that we just assume that that's just the way it is. And to an extent, that's true. Retro trends have always been around, but it's usually regulated to the sidelines and don't overwhelm other cultural innovation. Like the 80s had a big thing for the 50s, but it didn't stop the 80s from being like, the 80s. <laughs> And that is exactly what writer Mark Fisher believed was happening in modern day, that we've lost the ability to imagine new and different futures. The future, he said, has been canceled. There's actually a really interesting video where Fisher breaks down the entire theory, but it's a 45 minute still shot of him talking to a class. And if you have any life at all, it's pretty hard to get through. The slow cancellation of the future is a symptom of what Fisher called capitalist realism. And capitalist realism is, well, that's, that's above my pay grade. Honestly, ask Oliver from Philosophy Tube to do it. It'll be great. It'll be very nuanced and well-researched and I'll take his shirt off. Everyone wins. But the dumb version is, and I'm really sorry to do this to you, but capitalist realism is the matrix. <laughs> capitalist realism, the dumb version. Originally, the idea was that technology would free humanity from the chains of work and we would all have a lot more time to relax and play and create art and have orgies. I mean, that was the plan. I don't see what the problem was. But we're in this middle era where we still want technology to do everything for us, but we still think of people like livestock who only have value based on our productivity. At some point, we will have to transition to letting people have value without working so much if we want the cool orgy future. Currently, technology is largely being used to make us more productive instead of less. These constant distractions, the anxiety of now, keeps us fixed in the present, making us more busy, more stressed, and more focused on only creating what is profitable. Think about it. When was the last time you did a hobby without thinking, shit, could I do this for money? I mean, what do you think I'm doing right now? This video is supported on Patreon by viewers like you. <laughs>
Fisher wasn't trying to say that there aren't innovative people creating the future right now. They're out there, but it's more difficult to pursue creating new things because it's so financially risky. I mean, a lot of video game companies are one flop away from closing their doors at all times. Art school in this economy? And those who are creating are competing for your attention with huge corporations with millions of dollars to promote their products. Jesus, this is such a fucking downer. Can we get a puppy break? <laughs> I'm sorry. So this is all very upsetting. So what can we do about it? Fisher did have a solution that he intended to propose in his book, Acid Communism, which unfortunately he never finished. Fisher committed suicide in January of 2017. There is a collection of his blog writing called K-Punk, the collected and unpublished writings of Mark Fisher that I recommend picking up if you're interested in learning more about it. Fisher's solution involves what he called tormenting capitalism with the real. Essentially to overcome the slow cancellation of the future, we must first regain control of it. But what does that look like, right? Well, if you're asking me, and if you're here, I assume you are, I say, vote for better politicians, you know? People who have a direct plan to disrupt corporate monopolies. People who understand that human beings have value beyond their ability to produce content. And no more of these soggy bottom deregulation asshats. Just, yeah, don't tread on me. Unless you're Amazon, then tread on me all you want, daddy. <laughs> and I guess eat less meat, tweet radically, support independent artists directly. The future isn't canceled yet. It's lost. We just have to find it.